So my name is Ricky Sandu. I'm the founder and executive chairman of Urban Airport Limited. My background is I was trained as an architect, so I spent a lot of time working on complex buildings, you know, future cities, tall towers. Uh, and my last projects were actually um, an airport in Qatar. Um, but at the same time, I was doing an inner city redevelopment in Sweden. And so I guess Urban Airport is kind of a mixture of those two things, aviation and kind of urban cities. And so we're bringing aviation infrastructure into the center um, of cities. And that's going to be really important if we want advanced air mobility and urban air mobility to actually be viable and sustainable. Yeah. Um, so where we are right now, in the middle of Coventry city center, half a million people live and work here every day. We're 60 seconds from the uh, mainline railway station and we're 60 seconds from Coventry city center itself. Um, and on Monday here, on our launch day, um, we had the inaugural flight of the largest drone, which has uh, a payload of 150 pounds, which is about 70 kg. Take off safely, fly safely and land safely in such a built up setting. That's the first time that's ever happened anywhere in the world. And that happened in urban airports. So that's what we're here to do. We don't make the drones. We don't fly the drones. We just kind of provide the infrastructure to charge them, maintain them, load them. Um, and then give them a safe departure and then bring them back safely as well. Could you just explain to me uh, why the platform uh, raises and lowers in the way it does? What's the, what are the benefits of that? Why have you done that? Yeah, so our aircraft carrier um, is the largest aircraft carrier on shore in the world. Um, we have a split technology. So when we have smaller cargo drones, we use the smaller FATA-1. If you have a slightly larger cargo drone, like the uh, Malloy Aeronautics T650, that can carry 300 kilograms. That's you, me, probably three times. Yeah. Um, we use FATA-2. And for this air taxi, which is a passenger air taxi, this would use FATA-3, which is the whole thing. And so that's um, a novel way um, of um, allowing these kinds of vehicles to take off. And the reason why we have it as an aircraft carrier is because as a passenger, we want you to feel comfortable. Hence all of our investment in the air taxi lounge with the Urban Airport Cafe. So when you are super relaxed and you feel kind of, you know, I've had a croissant, I've had a coffee, I've done a bit of shopping even, um, we don't want then for you to climb up some stairs and go to a top of a windy, blustery, rainy rooftop. So we want you to board in a comfortable manner, like you do when you go to the train station, like you do when you go to a normal airport as well. And so you board at grade, right? That makes sense. Um, and also the vehicle needs to be charged. And we're standing next to one of our chargers here, um, needs to be charged at grade. We can't charge it, you know, six meters in the air. And so it's best for the vehicle, it's best for the passenger. And then when the pilot and the passenger is all ready to go, um, we then get the signal from the pilot. Um, we then move the vehicle up to its takeoff position, which is elevated here about six meters. And the reason why we do that is because the pilot then has perfect 360 visibility. What do you think will be the kind of first markets that verticals will be used for and, and how large and important do you think that those markets will become? Right, so, so the um, Supernal vehicle here, so their kind of timeline is 2028, they're in no hurry. Um, they're backed by Hyundai Motor Group, obviously it's their, it's their um, eVTOL brand. But there are other um, eVTOL companies like Vertical Aerospace, they were all here yesterday. Um, uh, and they're aiming for 2024. Volocops from Germany aiming for 2024, 25. So we're in 2022, so it's two years out. And if those vehicles successfully reach their certification, that's great, but they won't be able to you know, provide a service unless there's the infrastructure in place. And our job is to pave the way for them uh, and build a ground infrastructure where they can charge, where they can maintain, where you can board, book a ticket um, and build the industry from the ground up. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing, right? I mean, we've had thousands of people already. We're only in day three. Um, and what I'm really excited about is actually we had VIP days on Monday, Tuesday and today. Um, but starting tomorrow, Thursday, um, is our first public day and we're sold out for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, so we're going to have to put more slots on. But that is awesome because it means the public are genuinely interested. And part of our mission has always been we spend a lot of time, effort and money on PR and marketing because there's no point innovating and going too far ahead if you leave the consumer behind. So we've been kind of you know, telling everyone what we're doing and bringing everyone in. And we want people to leave here you know, having had an awesome experience and got close to an air taxi, which people have not done before yeah. in, in a city, right? Um, but then, you know, they've had a coffee, they've had a croissant, they've used a smart vending machine, they've checked out some cool gear. Yeah. Um, 
And then they go home and, and they kind of say, yeah, you know, it was kind of cool. I kind of, yeah, you, there's normal boarding process, you know. And so that's our goal. Um, and I think that will have a big impact on, on, on how people perceive aviation. You know, it's, sometimes it's had a very negative um, perception of uh, the, the aviation industry, but actually it can really be sustainable. And I think, you know, the way that we've even designed the infrastructure here, designed for assembly, designed for disassembly, um, which means none of this is going to get wasted. Um, this will always be in service, uh, whether it's in Coventry or whether it's in another country or another city, this will always be in service. And that means, you know, we've designed it to last. Um, and then to add that, you know, you know, if you can fly from here in two years time in one of those to London in 25 minutes, yeah. that's going to save you over half an hour of time. And time is our, you know, in the end, it's our biggest investment that we can make as individuals. And so. Let's get the country being more productive, not sitting in traffic. Um, yeah. yeah, and actually, you know, lead the way. Just quickly, one final question. I mean, it's important to add, I think, that this isn't just a tourist attraction, is it? There's some serious sort of research going on here as well. Absolutely, yeah. We've got Coventry University here, the National Transport Design Centre, but we've got West Midlands Police have set up a shop um, in our logistics hub. And they are, you know, they're so excited because they're, they're moving from dogs to drones. And they've just done, actually, another drone flight where they're demonstrating their camera technologies and how they're helping us to you know helping us all remain safe and West Midlands Police Force second largest police force in, in the UK yeah. um, and so the fact that they're here adds a lot of you know comfort I think to to us all um, and so they're using this as a hub for their future kind of police operations which is all again helping us uh, remain safe and there's a lot of research going on as well we've had all the leading eVTOL uh, OEMs here from across the world um, to understand how we can charge their vehicle how the CONOPS works in terms of how the vehicle interacts with the infrastructure. And so that kind of coming together of an industry here is super important for us all to move the industry forward. Otherwise, there isn't an industry, we just talk about it, and as you said, there's just renderings, but now we're getting it done.